character. I started up that whole, he's still the king. Anytime somebody would bring him up, I'm like, no, I don't care that. Yeah, he lost, totally. He was dominated, he was destroyed, he was annihilated. Guess what? He still did what he did. He still accomplished what he accomplished. He's still the king. If he never fights again, he's the king. Comenzó él en un palo de guayaba, en su casa de habitación. En aquellos años, estaba pequeñito, siete años a ocho años de edad, cuando se le comenzó a dar sus primeros pasos en un palo de guayaba, con unos guantes de luz, de electricidad. Saliendo de la pobreza fue importante para mí eh, darle lo mejor que a mi mamá, ¿verdad? a mi familia, a, principalmente a mis hijos, para que estudien, no le haga falta nada. Y así mismo, pues, darle ejemplo a, a muchos jóvenes que ellos pueden lograr lo que yo también he hecho. Bueno, yo tomaba, este es parte de la misma historia que, vamos, yo tomaba licor. Y yo, cuando lo ponía en el saco, en el palo guayaba, Uy, pero no muy amareado, sino que con mis tragos yo vas a ser campeón del mundo, le decía yo, escrito está y así será, hijo, le decía yo. Son palabras que todo el mundo, los amigos, que mucha parte de ellos están aquí en los Estados Unidos, eh, sabían. Rich people don't grow up and turn into boxers. Boxing has historically been called the sport of the poor, the gym, the sanctuary of the street. Boxing is where You can come from anywhere. Only in boxing can you literally fight by yourself from the very bottom of society all the way to the top. It's a miraculous endeavor when a father wills it and speaks it into existence for his kid. That's the beauty of the fight game. Cuando uno tiene una misión de, de volver nuevamente a ser campeón del mundo, hace todo lo posible en el gimnasio. Hace un buen trabajo con el equipo y, y eso es lo que sucedió el día de la pelea. We had the opportunity to fight against Cal Jafai, which landed uh, uh, on the negotiation table because of God, because uh, he was supposed to fight Gallo Estrada. Gallo got sick. So they gave us, they offered us the fight. Jafai is... He's the fresher fighter. He's also like taller, rangier. He's the naturally bigger guy. Going into the Cal Yafai fight, there was sort of a doubt that Chocolatito still had it. There was almost an attitude that it was okay for him to lose because he had already lost. Stylistically, it could be a nightmare for him. So I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what version or what style of Cal Yafai was going to show up that night, but I knew he had his hands full. If you pay attention to Twitter, which you shouldn't, Chocolatito was going to lose to Cal Yafai. It was going to be retirement home. Cal Yafai was going to send Chocolatito off to the glue factory, and that was going to be the end of an illustrious career, go to the Hall of Fame, 
Get your accolades. Thanks for fighting, we all love you. At the same time, I believed in him. You know, like, even if though my mind was saying, hey, prepare for the worst, my heart was saying, no, Chocolatito's got that. It didn't take long for him to find his warmth. Like, he looked a little unsure in the first round, but even by, like, the last 30 seconds, like, he landed some shots that made me think, okay, that's good, you know. In the second round, I'm like, hey, he's looking like Chocolatito. In the third round, I'm like, oh, man, he's in his momentum, and thank God Yafai thinks that he can bang with him. Yafai gave him that opportunity to kind of punch himself into prime form. Yafai wanted to duke it out, and I'm like, oh, that's perfect for Chocolatito style, which is volume punching, combination punching, stepping around, you know, overwhelming guys, bamboozling them, and he did all of that. We know that once a boxer loses, you're gonna get a lot of hardships, and one of the biggest ones is that a lot of people, they get off the bandwagon, and media included. This is a fighter who, not long before this fight, was the consensus number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. And here he was, getting ready to fight a world champion. And nobody was going to cover him. The rematch between Roman Gonzalez and Juan Francisco Estrada is one of those elite level return matches I didn't think was gonna happen because it just been too many years had passed since their first fight. The first fight, as good as boxing gets, it was absolutely sensational. It's Roman Gonzalez at his peak, at his absolute prime. He should have been a pound for pound player at this time, um, but he was, you know, he hadn't fought on American television, at least not much. And he was fighting at 108 pounds, junior flyweight. So it's a division that obviously gets overlooked here in the United States. So it was an amazing thing, that resurrection of Chocolatito actually resurrected that, that rematch. And we actually get it like eight years later, eight and a half years later. Hay muchos cambios que uno va teniendo a, a su debido tiempo, ¿verdad? Y pues, eh, ambos teníamos experiencia porque teníamos más pelea, ¿verdad? Y, y pues, eh, and you got exactly what you wished for with that fight. Eight years in the making, people wanted to see Chocolatito and Juan Francisco Estrada have a rematch. In terms of sustained Elite level action. No, the fight of the year was the rematch between Chocolatito and Estrada. Does it matter who won? No, it was a great fight. Fights like that are what make a Hall of Fame fighter. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Albert? So, there's good news and bad news. I don't know which one you want to hear first. Uh, but, uh, give me, give me the fucking bad news first. What's going on? So, um, guy, yo, I guess he tested positive for COVID. Oh shit. Yeah, the fight's not happening. Fuck. But this is where the good, this is where the good news comes in. Um, they got Martinez, Julio Cesar Martinez, to step in, and he has something to be offering. Ray? So, El Rey yeah, Martinez? El Rey, Rey, WBC champ, he's coming up. I think it's a excellent fight as well. So, Holy shit. Chuck's, yeah, Chuck's like, fuck it, let's do it. Um, 
Obviously, he didn't want his camp to go to waste, so he wants to fight. Just sure. want to let you know, man. Just be prepared to see it. <laughs> see it everywhere. That's rare, right? Boxing Twitter being positive, like, okay, we're not getting the fight that we all wanted, but this substitute ain't bad. Like, this ain't bad. Like, we're not getting the steak, but we're getting the salmon, and we hear it's pretty good. Julio Cesar Martinez. That dude is pure violence. He is a dangerous opponent for Chocolatito. I kind of feel like a broken record, but from Really, from the, the, the Sorungvisai KO rematch loss on, it's like whenever he's in with a world-class guy, you never know. Like, he, you never know when his last effort was his last great effort, right? And if he can't summon a great effort against Martinez, and Martinez brings his A game, then why wouldn't he be motivated as hell? What happens? What happens when he ain't feeling it? You know, when he doesn't have that mojo? Can he recapture it? during a firefight. You know, we'll find out. And without missing a beat, Chocolatito, the fucking balls on this guy. <laughs> 